so this is a GC over level chemistry exercise. We are given somewhat of a flowchart where some dilute nitric acid is used in several reactions. The way I approach such problems is to pick the shortest path first, well, because they tend to be the easiest. In this case, it is the distillation of the nitric acid that produced some colorless distillate. So first of all, nitric acid is simply a solution of HNO3. If we have to distillate nitric acid, what we can do in a school laboratory follows this simple diagram. The flask containing HMO3 will be heated by a burner. Due to heating, vaporization happens, and the vapor will leave the flask and enter this segment which is called a condenser. Coolant enters the condenser from its bottom and exits from its top. Normally in the school laboratory, we just use tap water as the coolant. What it does is that it lowers the temperature of the vapor entering the condenser until below its boiling point, so that the vapor will revert back into its liquid form. And because we are just heating nitric acid, all we are doing is just evaporating water. So the distillate in question is simply H2O. Now we are done with the center path, let's try the upper path next. It says that some metal oxide is added to the nitric acid to produce a blue solution. Because nitrate salts are soluble, the blue color is attributed to the metal ion. And the most representative metal ion that gives a blue appearance is perhaps copper, Cu2+. What confirms this suspicion is that the addition of sodium hydroxide produces a blue precipitate, which is exactly the color of copper hydroxide. Therefore, the metal oxide at the beginning is simply copper oxide, which takes a dark appearance. All that remains now is the bottom path, which also starts with the addition of a metal oxide. So this creates a brown solution, and in grade school textbooks, iron 3 is probably the only one described to have a brown appearance. And this is once again supported by the subsequent reaction because the color of ion-3 hydroxide is indeed reddish-brown. Hence, we can confirm that the oxide will be ion-3 oxide, which is Fe2O3, because the valency of oxygen is minus 2. However, I do want to mention that the color of ion-3 solution may not always appear in brown. In aqueous form, ion-3 can form a complex ion with six water molecules. This complex ion tends to further release a proton, or a hydrogen ion, to form another complex ion, which gives a faint yellow appearance. So don't be surprised if, for example, you ever notice a solution of ion-3 chloride that appears yellow instead of brown. Anyways, I hope this problem serves well as a quick refresher. It would be great too if you pick up something new.